know, certain of the players had no benefits. Um, developmental players had no health insurance. So if you can imagine that, a professional athlete who does not have health insurance, the pay was minuscule. So the, the senior minimum was $24,000 a year, but the developmental minimum was as low as $950 a month. Uh, and that's without benefits. There was no retirement plan, so no 401k. In terms of movement rights, there was literally none. So even uh, to the extent that you got terminated, which you could be um, terminated at, at will because there were no virtually no guaranteed contracts, if you were terminated by your club, you they continued to hold your rights. So you could be fired told that a club doesn't want you anymore, and then prohibited or prevented from signing with another club that did want you. We would have talks, I remember, and um, you know, he's, those talks started to develop, and, and I think we got more influential players in those talks, whether it was Alexi Lawless, Tim Howard, uh, Landon Donovan, uh, Chris Klein, I know, was involved in those early discussions and, and put, to get, put together this executive board that was um, it was it was really just that board and Bob for from my recollection for a long time uh, and of course we would talk to others and our teams and things like that but that was a real a focus group for a long time and there's some some sharp guys in there and some influential guys we were going to have to ask for some things and you know not to be overly dramatic about it but then kind of hope that they would give them to us and so I think as we started to figure out what we wanted to ask for, there were more lifestyle changes than they were, you know, just asking straight up for money. And um, I think we felt like asking for lifestyle changes <clears throat> uh, made more sense at the time. That's just kind of some of the low-hanging fruit that would not get, get fixed unless we did this. Let's ask for those things first. And, and I think uh, it was, we were able to say to the league, you know, these things won't necessarily cost you money. These are just some changes here, some shifting there to make life better for the players. I think the, the first thing for me that I, that I thought in my mind was that the league is getting it together. So if they're able to provide those things, now all of a sudden they are growing and they feel confident enough that they can provide this for players. Um, you know, a lot of guys, right, you can, now you can get off of your parents' insurance Right? And, and things like that. And so now you also start to feel more like a professional. 2009, 2010 was difficult. Um, that was the first time we'd ever gone to a federal arbitration. It was the first time we ever really sat in that room in DC and just kind of stared down the barrel of a stoppage. Um, there were, as you know, consistently in the league, you, there were big things that were going to happen at the beginning of that year that we were just inching toward. And you know the league plays chicken with you, and um, that was you know the main takeaway from that negotiation was the reentry draft. You know how do you find a way to get these guys who um, have played out their contract and have no freedom to move? And I was one of those guys. The economics are always the main thing. But in 2015, free agency was a huge topic of conversation. We wanted to get some semblance of free agency because up until that point, it didn't exist. We ended up getting free agency. And, and actually, when you look at the 2015 deal, there are certain foundational pieces, elements, if you will, that set us up for a better deal going forward. And I think that's the idea, is that it may be incremental, but even anything groundbreaking, anything that changes the game, that sets you up for the next deal, that's a win. Where I want to see MLS go is obviously a place they, that we, we probably didn't think we can get to right now. Um, when you think of the top leagues in the world and what their players um, are able to receive from their league in terms of benefits and travel, hotel, compensation, um, you know, we're obviously at the, the bottom end of that right now, but, you know, I'm hoping in 25 years, like, players are excited to come play in the MLS because not only are they compensated at a very good level, but they're also taken care of very well.